Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's Board of Appeals hearing. Rises to this board. To my left is Valerie Manzo, counsel to the board. To her left is David Flynn, assistant planning director. Now let me tell you why you're here tonight. New York State statute requires that any town that adopts zoning must also have a Board of Appeals to act as a relief valve so that those persons agreed by strict application of the zoning ordinance can seek relief without the expense of going to court. Town Board can give a Board of Appeals additional powers as such as special exception approval, site plan approval, etc. In Smithtown, the Town Board has given this Board authority regarding certificate of existing use and some special exception uses. <clears throat> the most common kind of application before the Board are area variances. Area variances deal with dimensions such as lot area, frontage, height, setbacks, and parking spaces. New York State statute mandates that the Board must consider the following five criteria and area variances. When you come to the podium to present your application, you need to address these five areas. They're posted for you. <clears throat> Number one, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created. Number two, whether the applicant has other feasible alternatives. Number three, whether the variance is substantial. Number four, whether an adverse impact on the environment will be created. And number five, where the alleged difficulty is self-created. The statute requires the board to balance the interests of the applicant and those of the neighborhood or community. This statute further requires that the board shall grant the minimum variance it shall deem necessary and adequate, and at the same time, preserve and protect the character of the neighborhood and the health, safety, and welfare of the community. The board has the power to impose reasonable condition for granting variances. Special exceptions are different than area variances. Uh, we do have a special exception if it is a permitted use, a special exception. If they meet all the criteria, then this board has to grant. If they do not meet all the criteria, then they have to ask for variances. Um, regarding procedure, cases will be called in, that, in order they are advertised. When your case is called, Please come forward, submit your affidavits and mailing receipts to Mr. Flynn, and then you will be sworn in at the podium and be given the opportunity to explain to the board why you need the variance. After the applicant is done speaking, all interested parties will be given one opportunity and only one opportunity. So please, organize your thoughts, keep your remarks factual that are related to the case. Then I will ask the applicant to come back to the podium to answer your concerns. The board will then close the case and reserve decision. After all the hearings are closed, the board will review the cases and decide some of them. Others will be reviewed at a later date. There are three ways to find out the results of the case. Number one, you can wait until after the public hearing, but there's no guarantee that the board will act on your case tonight. Number two, you can call the planning department tomorrow afternoon. And number three, applicants can wait and be notified by mail. We do have one uh, adjournment. <clears throat> Case 1-16355 is on the back of the schedule. It is Margaret Churcher. It has been adjourned to June 14th. Was there anyone here for that case? First case tonight, then. Case 16424, Richard Buttonton Court, 7 Bluegrass Lane, Comac. Location, west side of Bluegrass Lane, north of Hayrick Lane, Comac. Property zone R10. Request special exception in order to permit temporary living quarters for a parent. Variance to increase maximum gross floor <coughs> from 600 square feet to 1,105 square feet for a proposed 1,105 second story addition, increasing the maximum paved surface in the front yard from 25% to 35%. Okay. You can go to the podium, please. Okay. Um, may I have your name, please? Sure. Richard Betancourt. And your address? 7 Bluegrass Lane, Comac. Okay. Raise your right hand, please. 
Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Right. Are you going to speak? No, I'll sit down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. You want to tell us why you're here, please? Uh, yes. I'm looking to expand my home in order to have my mother move in. Um, I spoke to a contractor. We pretty much went over all of these type of things, and um, this is the result that we came up with, that we would need to do the, uh, create this space, again, in order for her to move in. Um, just let me tell you, I, we go over the plans and we, yeah. we, we do make, um, I notice that you, you're, you seem to be have bedrooms downstairs and bathrooms and bedrooms upstairs and bathrooms. Yes. Reason being? Um, well, the upstairs is going to be primarily used by my mother. Um, she has friends, relatives, grandchildren. So we tried to set it up so she'd be able to entertain, per se, down you know, on the first floor. She mm -hmm. currently lives in a house right now, and we didn't want to do too much of an extreme difference. Okay. Also, I mean, we're going to be losing a lot of some space in our house, what we're accustomed to. Um, how this is exactly going to play out, maybe it'll be more neutral territory down there. We're not quite sure. If we did just one le uh, level, it would only be like 550 square feet, which is a hotel room, I guess. Yeah. Which definitely wouldn't be enough room. It really is substantial to ask for over 1,000 square feet. Planning? Madam Chair, the planning department, as you know, prepared an advisory report. Okay. Um, the, basically, the planning department's concerned um, that the uh, proposal sort of undermines the town board's intent in limiting the size of uh, temporary living quarters. And recommend, the planning department recommends that the board um, carefully consider the variance and um, the precedent that it may or may not set with respect to future applications, and also the fairness um, that it would be in comparison to previous applicants who have uh, generally had to comply with the uh, maximum floor area. Um, I do have another of photographs of houses just like mine doing this type of um, addition. I have, I have three. I'm sure there's more, but I just happen to get three others. But you don't know if they came in for special exceptions for or if they have been approved. Well, I assume so. <laughs> you know, I can't assume that. And you're taking out the garage also, yes, right? Yes, we're replacing it, right. If we kept the garage, it would be, you know, even larger. We, you know, kept it within limits based on setback rules, et cetera. Talking to the mic, I'm sorry. Sure, I'm just saying we, we're removing the garage in order to keep in compliance with setback rules. Gentlemen, is there any questions? No. Uh, no, thanks. Okay. Okay, I mean, again, the bottom line is one, one floor would not have been enough. Um, that's why we're going for two. Well, okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing that, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Really move the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. Next case is case 16425, Christy DeMonte. Uh, okay. For Gibby, uh, Gibby, Live Smithtown location, southwest corner of Gibby and Juniper. Avenue, Smithtown property zone R10. Request variant to increase the maximum gross floor area of a lot from 25% to 38%. Reduce the minimum front yard on Gibby Drive from 25 feet to 16 for a two-story addition. Reduce the minimum side yard on West from 12 to 11 existing. Increase the maximum paving in side yard from 25% to 53%. 
Reduce the front yard setback on Gibby Drive from 25 feet to 6 for a 49 square foot shed. And your name, please? My name is Frank Restituto. I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Christy DeMonte. I need Christy. Okay. Okay. May I have your name, please? Christy DeMonte. And your address, Christy? Uh, for Higby Drive in Smithtown, 11787. And raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Now, would you like this gentleman sure. to speak for you? Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. I need your name, and I need you to spell your last name, please. Frank Restituto, R-E-S-T-I-T-U-T-O. And your address? 18 Crabapple Lane, Comac. Okay. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Madam Chairman, members of the board, the matter at hand is the construction of addition to an existing residence at the southwest corner of Higby Drive and Juniper Avenue. My client, in an effort to enhance the appearance of their existing residence and to accommodate their needs for additional living and storage space for their active and growing family, is requesting a relaxation of various setback and cover coverage requirements. The residence is situated on a corner lot which in itself creates a hardship due to the requirement of two front yard setbacks. As a result, the setback requirements and available building envelope for this particular parcel are much more restrictive than a typical interior lot. In addition, as you can see on the site plan, the residence is originally constructed one foot too close to the west property line, causing it to be viewed as a non-conforming structure. This also causes my client an unanticipated hardship over which they have no control. The residence currently does not have a garage, which my client is in need for the storage of their vehicles, outdoor furniture, and recreational equipment. The existing basement in the residence is limited in size and has limited headroom and does not lend itself for storage of bulky items. When designing the new addition, strong consideration was given to the neighbor's privacy. We have a full understanding of the threat of a new imposing structure so close to the property lines. Accordingly, the addition was purposely designed at a 45 degree angle to the existing residence to limit the intrusion of the new structure on the adjoining neighbor and to limit the oversight of the new addition to the neighbor's side and rear yards. There will be no windows on the west side of the new addition to assure the greatest degree of privacy to the adjoining neighbor. The space above the garage will be used strictly for the owner's personal use with direct access to their living quarters. The existing plastic shed on the Higby Drive will be relocated by the owner. The board is requested to consider favorably on these various requests so that the existing residents can be visually and functionally enhanced and we would appreciate your consideration that the design and layout of the new addition takes the adjoining neighbors and neighborhood concerns into account. Thank you. All right. Just a couple of things. Yes. Um, first of all, it looks like the second floor is going to be an office. Is that correct? A home office, yes. A home office. Yes. Can I ask, you have a door and a staircase from the outside going to the upstairs yes, to the do. office? What is the reason for that? Uh, my client is... Uh, has an my, my client has an accounting practice, and she will on occasion entertain clients. Rather than to go through the main house, they come up the back stairs. Is that going to qualify for home occupation? There's not enough information from what I just heard. Um, something that's sporadic, you know, really like an occasional event, is not normally considered a land use, but depends on how often um, the use is used for business. The town is normally instructed in uh, courses that we need to attend that when something's ambiguous, it's usually uh, a conservative conclusion is warranted, meaning that there has to be an assumption that it is a business. Um, however, I think Mr. Restituto used some adjective that seemed to say that it was occasional. The question is, how occasional is it? Yeah, I actually
actually do work for a firm, but it would just be some private work that I do, so it wouldn't be on an everyday basis. It would be very fair few. Just let me tell you something else. 38% is very substantial. The board has, um, unless it's a very narrow lot or very small lot or there's something unique about the lot, they have not we have not really given 38% as an FAR. So um, I don't know how the other members will feel, but that is really very substantial, 38%. Is the board offering an option to that, uh, like a reduced percentage? I mean, we make, um, when we make our decision, we may give you a percentage that, you know, uh, maybe 30% or that 31. I'm not sure how the board will. Um, yeah, go ahead. Um, what's the objective of your client to um, have a garage, right? Yes. And then have. Uh, an office above it, and, and I have to, the more I think about it, the more I'm concerned that if someone's building an office, distinguishing between something that's personal versus something that's business becomes tricky. You know, if someone were using a den, and then occasionally someone, a, a customer or client came over on a very rare occasion, I think enforcement people would not conclude that that's using residential property for a business. Yeah, I think that's the case. So but but the difference here, though, is that this isn't depicted as a den. It's depicted as an office. And just let me um, extrapolate for a lot further than normal. If someone were building a gas station and saying, well, I'm only going to use it once a year to sell gas, there really is no other purpose for it other than selling gas, right. as opposed to a den. Right. In this situation, it's not as extreme as a, as a filling station but it is shown in the plans as an office, um, which seems to imply that absent anything else, it does seem like it's intended to be a business. Well, she doesn't have a business, that's the thing. She, right. is, she is not in business, she is employed by somebody. Okay. Um, okay. What's the difference between having an office in the downstairs compared to having the office above the garage? There's no difference. Um, yeah. The question is, the, the point I was trying to make is if someone had a house with, let's just say, on the first floor, a living room, kitchen, mm -hmm. dining room, and a family room, and occasionally um, someone comes into a family room, a, a client, and it's really occasional, is that really using property for business? Sure, it is, you know, one hour a year or two hours a year. At what point does it become a land use as opposed to an occasional event? Now, that's a very rhetorical question, um, and normally we don't have to deal with it. It's uh, because usually when someone wants to open up a chiropractic office or something like that, it's usually used five days a week. Um, but it is sort of troublesome to see on a plan a large office space depicted as office, you know, labeled as office. Um, the first thought that I guess went, perhaps one of the first thoughts that went through the chair's head is... Um, that it looks like that this is a home occupation. Well, with all due respect, I hope the word office isn't really the, the turning key here, because... Not it, on the it, FAR, I don't think. It will be yeah. used, uh, as she said, occasionally, okay? And then as uh, uh, Joe had indicated to me, um, there are children in the house, and she's, she would be bringing home private documents, you know, accounting documents, mm -hmm. and they would need this additional space outside of the living quarters in order to do her work. So that's really what this is about. There's no commercial enterprise that's going to be generated in this space. I can assure you of that. Okay. But so the, the essence of what they're seeking is, is two stories. The first floor is a garage. The second floor is office space? Correct. Okay. I mean, it could be considered a computer room. You know, yeah, or. A computer, a computer that's why I say I hope we're not hanging on the word office because I could have called it a computer room okay. or I could have called it a recreation yeah. room. Sure. So because that's, that's the limit to, as, as far as it's going to get. Like I said, there'll be no commercial enterprise. There'll be no renting mm -hmm. or any of that kind of thing. And there'll be no parking lot that'll be, occupy 10 spaces and you know, have a business going on. Right. It's really just for a computer to be in, files, stuff like that. It's, it's a very big room. I mean, it is a big room. I, I, 
I'm, I'm looking at this. It's 720 square feet each floor. So you're talking I mean, about. But what else are you going to do with above the garage? That's the only thing. I mean, we just want it to look nice at the same point. Yeah. That's really. Would it be possible to? Um, I agree that the board struggles with going above 30 percent uh, quite a bit. Is it possible for you to reconfigure this so that the office becomes smaller? If one of the concerns is that you want storage space for files, maybe configure it so it looks like a roof line shrink up the habitable space that's up there and build some custom file cabinets into the eaves well, that's, that's so that you can I, actually drop that square footage, get down closer to 30%. Yeah, that's what I mentioned before. If you give me a, a target, I could work towards that. But we could, there's uh, a definite need for storage space. If, it's, if the storage space is not considered as part of the computer room, then we could work something out there too. Oh, it is. Well, if it's built into the eaves and they um, reconfigure it so that it's built into the roof lines, does that... Um, square footage in the FAR drop, Dave? Yes. So you can probably bring that size down, still accomplish the goal of having file storage, but get the size of that room way down, and then the FAR would drop. Well, yeah. we'll consider it. Yeah. Uh, question, okay. I don't have the plans in front of me. How large is the lot? Uh, 15,000 square feet. Okay. Um, without editorializing, then, it is a large house. I mean, it's not like... No um, um, you know, someone's on a 6,000 square foot lot or something and it's a 38% request. It's on a third of an acre or more than a third of an acre, which would mean what the gross floor area um, is 6,000 square feet? It's uh, a little less than that. Okay. You want the exact number? No, I mean, that's okay. I mean, that's the ballpark. I'm, I'm just trying to say I think that's a pretty large house mm -hmm. from a practical difficulty standpoint. It's not like trying to shoehorn something into a 1,200-square-foot mm -hmm. house. Well, we're adding an, an additional bedroom on the second floor. You know, the family oh, okay. is growing. Uh, yeah, the numbers start to add up. Okay. Part, part of that square footage is also an outside porch. And also part of that square footage is the attic. Right which George at the billing department required that I add that into the square footage. Okay. So the number that you see, although it looks like a big number, it, is, it includes the porch and the, and the attic, right. which... And, and I'm, I'm glad you said it, everything you said because it is a lot more than an office and a garage. I, I didn't catch oh, without the, the bedroom. Doubt. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a, it's an over, it's a two car garage. Okay. It's a, the two car garage is 700 and... 30 square feet, I think it was, or right. 738 okay. square feet. But again, I want to point out that um, I was surprised that George asked me to include the attic space sure. in the FAR, and that, that just seems a little over the top. I understand. I mean, it is a requirement. Do you know how big the attic is in terms of floor area, or I what do. percent of the 38 percent is attic space? The attic space is uh, 500 square feet. Okay. Or roughly 10 percent of the total. Yeah, and the the porch is 230 square feet. Okay. I don't think we. Normally agree. porches aren't included, so we'll check and. Well, that that he it, asked me to include the porch in in the FAR. Is the porch enclosed by walls? No, it's just it's, covered. It's, it has a roof, and that's it. Yeah. And a wall on one side. But I was asked to specifically include okay. that. So there's like. How big is the porch? There's again? almost 800 square feet just in unusable wow. space. What's the total square footage that you had applied? I don't see it on the plan. I only see it for the addition on the plan. Mm -hmm. uh, the total square footage is uh, 5,340 square feet, including the attic and the porch. 5340 The house must have been over 25% to begin with. So 
those are the numbers. I'm coming up with 35.4 percent, so maybe there is something else. Okay. Well, at a time not at the hearing when the camera is running, we can spend the time to go over the numbers. Yeah. All right. Uh, when you're also thinking about the square footage of the house, you were just saying there's five children. Well, there's three plus us. That's two. And oh, five. Five people. Three are his children, so we're planning yeah, on yeah. having children. Mm -hmm. It's a big family. Okay. All right. Okay. We'll take everything into consideration. Okay. okay thank you. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? You want me to close this hearing or do you want to have them come in and resubmit something? Um, do you want to adjourn? I would. Yeah, I think we're going to have to adjourn it because you're probably going to have to resubmit and bring that percentage down. All right? Well, I'll give you a day. The next, um, next date, the next hearing would be June 14th. Okay? Next case is case 16426, Stanley and Patricia Goodstick, 45 Dillmont Drive, Smithtown. Location, north side of Dillmont Drive, west of Hilltop Drive, Smithtown, property zone R21. Request variance to reduce the minimum side yard from 8 feet to 6 feet for an existing 212 square foot shed. And your name, please. And your address, then. 45, Dillmont Drive, Smithtown. Okay, raise your right hand, please. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. You want to tell us why you're here, please? I uh, need a certificate of compliance for the shed in the backyard, and I went to the building department, and they said everything was good, except it was a little close to the property line. And when I built it, I built it myself. I thought the setback was six feet. And I think on the survey there, you'll see I made it six and a half. I was 18 inches short. So I have to apply for a variance. Okay. Planning, anything? Nothing, Madam Chair. Gentlemen? No question. No question. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Regularly moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Next case is case 16427. I Lou. I guess it's the, is it the second? Ian Liu, Ian Liu II, uh, care of Trailer City, uh, 100 East Jericho Turnpike, Comac, location south side of Jericho Turnpike, west of Wine Dance Boulevard, Comac property zone WSI and R10. Request variance to reduce outdoor storage setback to a resident district from 50 feet to zero. Variance to waive six required six foot fence and 10 foot buffer yard adjoining a resident district from 10 feet to zero for an existing outdoor storage. And your name, please? Louis Tarowski. Sorry. Okay. And let me ask you, are you the owner of this property? I am, yes. Okay. Let me have your address, please. It is 1098 East Jericho Turnpike, Comac, right. New York. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. You want to tell us why you're here, please? Actually, I would like to refer to my engineer for any questions. Okay. Could. Why don't you come up? 
May I have your name, please? My name is Justin Leah. I'm a professional right, Justin, engineer. you're going to have to really speak up okay. and use that mic. Justin Leah. I'm a professional engineer with Foresight Engineering, having addresses at 58 Janet Street, Port Jefferson Station, New York. All right. Spell your last name. L-I-A. All right. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Good evening. We're here requesting two variances. The first, reduce the outdoor storage setback to a residential district from 50 feet to zero feet. The second, reduce the required buffer adjoining a residence district from 10 feet to zero feet and eliminate the required buffer fence. This property is split zone WSI for the approximately the first 200 feet as it's set back from Jericho Turnpike. And then this southerly between 250 and 290 set feet is residential. So where we're asking for this relief actually falls north of the halfway line within this property. So between where we're asking for the relief and the adjoining residential neighbors, there's a horizontal distance approximately 250 feet. There's also a vertical distance where we're set lower than the residential parcels by approximately 27 feet. That, addition, that, that area, the southerly 250 feet of the lot, is heavily wooded. Um, we feel that's, that's a sufficient buffer against the residential. With regard to the variance, <coughs> area variance considerations, the first, whether an undesirable change will, produce, will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or detriment to nearby properties will be created by granting this area variance. Nice and loud, please. Okay. We don't feel that there'll be a negative impact or detriment to the neighborhood or adjoining properties because of that substantial wooded area that's between the area where we're asking for the variance and the adjoining neighbors to the south. Number two whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than the, an area variance. We have met with the planning department in compiling and preparing this document and we feel it's a reasonable, a reasonable thing to ask for. Um, essentially what we're doing is we're, we're putting the storage we're putting the storage in back of the building as opposed to putting it between the building and the frontage so we're kind of keeping it away from the curb appeal. Whether the area variance is substantial, well, we can appreciate reducing a, a setback from 50 feet to zero feet as a substantial variance. We, we don't feel it's substantial in this context because we have this 250 feet portion of the lot where it's wooded and it's, it's buffering the adjoining lots whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district. We're not proposing to clear any additional land in connection with this application. We're just trying to legalize what's there right now. It's not, not self-created. <coughs> Excuse me. My applicant's just trying to run his business. His business is a trailer um, truck cap business, and he does require a place to store this, um, the materials on site. Are there any questions? All right, let me just tell you that I visit the property. Okay. Okay. And so um, I'm going to tell you that um, we probably are going to put some conditions on this. First of all, can I may ask you, you have are you renting trucks there? I mean, there's a budget truck. What is in the front? Yes, we did do some budget. Uh, we do budget rentals out of there as well. And you park the trucks in the front of the building? Ordinarily, we parked them in the back, but we were, in the past couple of weeks, rearranging some things. So we had uh, one or two in the front. Ordinarily, they're either towards the back by the dumpster or on the, the side of the building. Um, is that shed going to be removed? There's a shed there? 
Yes, it is. The one that crosses the zoning line. It's, uh, it should be called out on the plan. Um, one story frame building to be removed. Okay. okay. But I'm just going to tell you that we probably will put some conditions on there. All right. So we'll let you know what they are. Planning? Madam Chair, from a planning standpoint, um, I think the board should be aware that on the south side of this section of Jericho Turnpike, there are about a half dozen lots that are very deep, and only about the front half is zoned business. Reducing the buffer um, on the front half of this lot is not likely to have a long-term adverse impact. Um, if you look at the surrounding development pattern, um, the likelihood of homes being in the back half, being built in the back half of this property, um, the likelihood is small that that would happen. The, uh, to the west, for some reason, the motel straddles uh, the residential uh, boundary line and has buildings in the residential zone. We're not sure why. The hotel, I think, was built in the 1940s or 50s. The motel, I'm sorry. Um, so while it sounds substantial to reduce the, uh, the buffers the way that it's proposed, when you look at it, it's really the front third of the property is level or nearly level with Jericho Turnpike, uh, the front 40%, I'm sorry. Then there's a steep incline, a very steep man-made incline where they previously dug out probably 40 or 50 years ago. Um, and it goes up approximately 40 feet, perhaps, and then it's fairly level and wooded toward the back of the property. So the, this is an unusual situation where reducing the buffer would not likely have an impact on adjacent properties. Okay. Gentlemen? No questions. Okay. okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Come up, please. May I have your name? And take that mic, push it up, please. Thank you. My name is Sean Slicher. Spell your last name, Sean. S is in Sam, L-E-I-C-H-E-R. And your address? 67 Astor Court. Okay. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Um, I live in a, uh, in a house on Astor Court where my backyard basically abuts um, these two lots, a portion of these two lots. Mm -hmm. And I, I've heard a lot of discussion here tonight about that the storage is forward of the residential section of the lot and is only on the commercial section. But I can say that uh, from my backyard, I see this storage right up against the fence line. Uh, so, for example, these budget trucks that were discussed um, last week or the week before, they were parked right against the fence, uh, right on my neighbor's property line. Um, I also see a lot of uh, storage in that area. It's been like that for the past uh, approximately one year that we've lived in this house. Um, there, there's a lot of uh, storage items that are much taller than six feet, taller than the fence line. Um, so, for example, th there are some what look like temporary outbuildings, um, maybe scaffolding, trailers, uh, uh, caps, things like that, that I see often that are uh, stacked very high. And again, these are, you know, right up against the fence line or, or within, you know, 20 or 30 feet of the fence. Um, I often see these trucks driving around in that area right on the other side of the fence. Um, and from my perspective, I mean, this really looks like quite an eyesore um, in, in seeing this storage and seeing these items. Um, there's also quite a bit of noise that goes on with the trucks driving around. Um, and also, um, I'm not sure if they may be renting out a portion of this residential lot to 
uh, renters or if they're renting it out to uh, maybe a band that has band practice, but I do hear uh, drums being played often late at night, very loud, coming from that, you know, one of those two lots. Um, so from, from my perspective of being, you know, homeowner with property abutting this property, uh, I'm, I'm definitely concerned about, you know, you know, the way that this is written here is that this is existing storage. And I see that this existing storage is not, you know, 300 or 400 feet away from the, from the property line. It's right up on the property line. You know, if it, if it was something that was further away and was heavily wooded, you know, I probably wouldn't have a problem with it. Um, you know, as you know, there, there's two lots right next to each other. Mm -hmm. The lot that's primarily behind mine is heavily wooded, but a, a small portion of my property and then the neighbor that's to the west of me, um, it's not heavily wooded there at all. I mean, there's, there's virtually no trees there at all. Um, you know, and then especially when you get into a majority portion of the year where you don't have any leaves on the trees, um, you know, you can, you can basically see everything that's on this lot and, and it really is an eyesore. Okay, thank you so much. Nick, please. Um, Michelle Bonaventura, 53 Astor Court. Uh, Say your last name. Bonaventura is B-O-N-A-V-E-N. T U R A. And your address, please. 53 Astor Court. Uh, okay. Um, my Raise house. Your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. I do. Um, I'm, I'm concerned about the storage as the person before this. Um, I've been living in, uh, at 53 Astor Court for 20 years. Um, and after the purchase um, of the uh, trailer um, property. Um, several mobile homes were um, parked behind my home um, and have been stored there. I don't see them moving anywhere, but you can see them from my property, and I feel that the uh, property value is going down, and when I received this note, I had concerns uh, because if they were uh, moving the storage back from the front of the building, I felt that there were going to be more things stored um, behind the building, um, bringing down the property value of my home, because you can see them from behind the fence. They're not that far away from it. And it was also my understanding that um, there is a 10-foot space between my property and his that is not even, uh, it's owned by LIPA. So there should be he should be in front of that also. That whole space um, behind all of those properties that go up against it, um, there should be space for that also. So it, I'm just concerned that there's going to be more storage. It is wooded, but there is uh, at least four or five mobile homes parked behind my fence line. And there is a residence also in front of that. Um, where I guess is being rented out, where we also hear the drums um, <laughs> being played quite often. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. You wanna come back, please? I think there's some confusion about which lot we're actually applying for. Um, this application, as we were directed by the planning department, is for lot four. The history of the application is that there was a change in use of lot four from a monument company to the current use. And when that change of use happened, there wasn't a site plan application. We were required to have these two variances in order to continue to operate the business that's there today. On the lot that, that we've shown, this area to the south, 250 to 290 feet, it's wooded and there isn't anything stored there. That's not to say that on the property to the west, there aren't things that are stored there. But today, this application is only for lot four. Is this? Lot four, what's, um, 
surrounded by the heavy property line on that drawing? Yes, it is. Um, and if you could just repeat what you said, none of the storage is happening on this property? No storage in the southerly 250 to 290 feet on lot okay. four. That's a, a wooded area. There isn't anything being stored there. Okay. Um, Are these two lots used in conjunction, or are they two separate businesses? They're under separate ownership, but do you want to elaborate oh, on that? Uh, do, do you use the bike, please? It is operated as the same business, but they are two separate entities uh, for the real estate company. The, the know, real estate company owns is two. No, the real estate, well, there's two different real estate companies owning two different pieces of property next to each other that share the same uh, business. And where are these trucks parked? Behind on this piece of property or are there, are there a piece of property? On the piece of property not in question, no. Is that going to be the subject of a future application or are we only legalizing conditions on this site? We're only legalizing the condition for lot four. Is, is this one site or? Uh, I, I don't know. I'd have to check the building department files. Yeah. I mean, it, it, go ahead. I don't think. Yeah, I think it is. Oh, it is on. I'm, we're, we're all confused. Are there leases between the, the company that's operating at the site with two different landlords, is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, so there are two landlords, they each own a property, Correct. and one business run by you yes. who has a lease with each landlord. Yes. And so as a, as a tenant, you're applying to legalize half of it. Correct. But it, so, it sounds like perhaps there's something not lawful going on on the other half, maybe, depending on whether they find the other people credible or that's not for me to say. I mean, but you are the you are the gentleman that runs this one company. Mm -hmm. Okay. But Does are that you clear telling me then these are two com different, completely different sites? They're not. Do you, was there one site plan approved back back in the day when this business began to operate? Initially, on the first piece, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Initially, on the first piece, the it was not a change of use from when we took over about 15 years ago. 16 years ago. What happened 15 years ago? We purchased the uh, first piece of property, and it was that type of business already in, uh, in business. Wait, but I thought you didn't own the property. I thought a landlord owned the property. I happen to own the business and the property. Oh, I see what you mean. So you wear two hats? That's exactly it, yeah. I wear three hats. It's three pieces. <coughs> oh, wow. Now we're changing things. Well, it's three not three parcels? pieces. It's, two, it's one business and two pieces. <laughs> I think we're going to have to study this a little bit. Mm -hmm. The history, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, that, go ahead. Okay. Um, the history, as I understand it, was that they owned lot three. They purchased lot four. Lot four was a monument company. They never applied for a site plan on lot four for a change of, it was a change of use that would have triggered a site plan application. Correct. That didn't happen. They were then... Um, <coughs> In, instructed that in order to legalize what they were doing, they had to submit a site plan on lot four. Um, and that's the one you hear about today? Absolutely. And there's extensive documentation of this in the planning department file, that this is how this, this came about, the application for lot four. Um, so we're trying to navigate the ordinance and secure an approval to legalize the use that's on lot four. That's what the application is for, and we're asking for those two variances. Okay. Could um, ahead, let me, uh, if I can, try to phrase this and correct me where I go wrong. There's one business, and it's basically a trailer or a truck cap business, mm -hmm. and it sits on two properties, lots three and four. Lot four is the subject of tonight's application, and it's the east lot? Correct. Okay. And the reason that um, you're before the board is that on this property, there was a change of use from a monument company 
to a motor vehicle uh, showroom? Yes. But on the lot to the west, there was no change of use because that was a motor vehicle showroom for a long time? That's correct. Okay. I have a few questions. Um, the storage higher than six feet, is that on lot four? No. Um, the mobile homes, are they on lot four? No, there's nothing actually on lot four. Right. And what about, uh, are you renting it out to any band or anything? That no, no, there's no band there, but, uh, but I did hear of somebody playing the drums, and uh, I think I could take care of that also. Okay. Okay, go ahead. When I was at the site, uh, there was a structure. I'm not sure what, what lot I was on. It looked like it was formerly a home. There's a, a, like a weight set or a gym on the side. Um, do, you know, can you, do you know what lot that is on? That's three. And that, is that to re that's a residence of some sort? Yes, that was a residence. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions, gentlemen? Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Is there any moved and second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Next case is case 16428, Eric and Adrian Gadlop, uh, 19 Marquette Drive, Smithtown location, east side of Marquette Drive, south of Colgate Drive, Smithtown property zone R10. Request variance to reduce the minimum side yard from 12 feet to 1, reduce total side yard from 28 feet to 19 for an existing 64 square foot shed. And your name, please? My name is... Uh that's, that's all right. Take it out. It's easier. Right. Okay. My name is uh, Eric Gollop. I reside at 19 Marquette Drive in Smithtown, New York. Okay. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. All right. Let me just get this situated. Okay. Um, what brings me here tonight is uh, I moved into the house on November 21st, 2009 uh, through my lawyer and a title search. Um, we did not find any issues with the property. Uh, upon uh, uh, six to eight months after moving into the property, the um, town uh, sent a letter stating that I had a shed that was um, not in with not within uh, didn't have a variance attached to it. Uh, upon further review with my lawyer and the previous owners, uh, I found out that they they built that shed and the cement beneath it in 2004 and, and started the process for the variance in 2004 but never completed it. What I also did find out is um, upon review through the town, the listing of the different variances that were put forth previously, this variance request was written down manually instead of typed out. Not that this really has any bearing on this, but what it was is that it was never found out originally upon the purchase of the property that that was there when they did the title search and so forth. Um, uh, again, I was given the letter stating that I need to get a variance. I went through the process. Uh, I've talked to my neighbors. If you review the property, the first thing I tried to do was move the shed into a more viable uh, area on the property there is a significant number of, a significant amount, excuse me, of architectural landscaping around the outside perimeter of my property, as well as an in-ground pool. Um, I have a deck, uh, so forth and so on. Uh, when you review the property through the Google and, the, and some of the pictures that I provided, the Google overhead, you will see that the, um, the place that the shed is presently is really the, the most viable spot for it on my property. Uh, that shed itself handles the uh, pool. Uh, I have a son, I put his, his toys and stuff in there. Um, it, it handles, actually, it's, it's packed. 
with stuff. So uh, it, is, uh, it is something that is in need for myself and my family uh, going forth. Couldn't you have moved that shed back a little bit? Uh, it, it, the, the distance that needed to be moved and the size of the shed does not allow, it's 12 feet from the, the, the property. So if I was to move it back, it would actually be hitting um, land, uh, the air conditioning and, and so forth and so on that's on the side of the house. Um, the actually, parts of the house would actually hit. So there's no way. There's, there's, an, there's a, um, I don't know what it's called. Uh, there's an overhang on that side, and there's a supporting structure that supports that overhang, uh, and it, uh, it would actually hit that moving it over. There's also trees, and you can see right above it, there are trees that are surrounding that property. Planning? Madam Chair. Gentlemen? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can you say one more thing? That, um, you know, upon talking to my neighbor, who the the, the shed is abutted to, is uh, that's their that's their side yard, and they just they put their um, their boat there. So there, it's not an eyesore of their property. Um, so I just wanted to add that. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing then, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Ready, moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Next case is case 16429, 630 Middle Country Road Realty Corp, 599 East Jericho Turnpike location. South East corner of Middle Country Road and Broadly Avenue, Smithtown, property zone WSI. Request variance, reduce minimum side yard from five feet to three, reduce total side yard from 15 feet to 13, reduce minimum landscaping area from parking and front property line from 8% to one of lot for a proposed two-story addition and canopy. Good evening, Madam Chairman, members of the board. My name is Vincent Tremarco. I represent the applicant. Um, as you probably know by reading the uh, disclosure affidavit, uh, this is the Mercedes-Benz facility, um, which I'm sure you all know uh, and seen for many years. Uh, the uh, Bezetta family who operates the uh, the Mercedes-Benz and some other car dealerships uh, has been in Smithtown for a very long time. As it would have it and as progress uh, moves forward, uh, Mercedes, I guess the franchisor or Mercedes America uh, has decided uh, that they uh, would like um, my clients uh, to be part of a new look uh, and that new look is what we're uh, proposing uh, tonight. But in order to do that, we have a couple of minor variances uh, that we need to ask this board for. And the board has been very generous over the years with this particular piece of property uh, in granting certain variances. It's a very long uh, piece of property uh, and relatively narrow. Mr. So Tomarco, may I stop you just for a minute, please, if you don't mind? Um, are we looking at the right plans now? Or are you, am, I, am I supposed to be looking at these? Which ones? Is this the seller plan? Is that? That's what, yes, that's what we had to submit. Okay. Because there was a, a revision uh, in that one. We are All right, you want to uh, share building this? A, a basement. Can you share this? Um, okay. I submitted those to uh, uh, planning uh, actually Monday. Um, Peter Hans looked them over just to see that there weren't any, any issues uh, that required a re-advertising. Uh, they do not. Um, 
And uh, the only thing that came up uh, when I showed the plans to uh, Peter, and I believe David looked at the plans also, uh, was an indication in the cellar area of a um, motor vehicle lift. Now, um, this is not a lift in the sense of a mechanics lift. This is an elevator. It's a motor vehicle elevator uh, to bring uh, cars up and down and into the showroom. So it's for storage. It's not uh, for mechanic work of any time, any kind. And that was the concern, I think, that uh, either Peter or David had uh, when, when I brought it in. Um, I guess if we thought about it, we would have said motor vehicle elevator instead of motor vehicle lift. Um, but we had a little English in there. and, and um, uh, Anyway, so that was the only issue there. Um, as I was saying, you can see there really isn't much difference from what's there now, which is this. Take the mic with you. They can't hear you, believe it or not. <laughs> That's what they're telling me. Good. This is the site plan as it exists now. And you can see uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the buildings, uh, the parking area, and the landscape area. Now, when we go to the new site plan, there really isn't a heck of a lot of difference. Of course, we're building the new addition. Uh, the landscaping, uh, which we're asking for, is, is less. But the entire property going, I don't know how many feet back, but what is it, eight or 900 feet? In any event, uh, most of it is landscaped. And you can't see it, but uh, that's the way the Bazettas are. They landscaped. They made it uh, really nice the first time. We even asked for a variance years ago to put in a car wash, not to make money, but to wash the cars uh, that are worked on uh, by the, uh, the mechanics uh, in the Mercedes-Benz uh, facility. In any event, this is the new uh, rendering. This is the new look. Um, as you can see, it's, it's very attractive. Um, there's this addition here, and there is an overhang on the right-hand side, on the looking at it on the left-hand side, that encroaches two feet uh, into uh, the required side yard. But on the east side, there is a, um, I think it's like, like a storage facility. And the, the back of the building of that facility uh, backs up to uh, um, the Mercedes facility. So we're really not affecting anyone uh, with respect to uh, uh, any type of encroachment. Um, Actually, the backs, I think the back of their wall is, is probably no more than five feet, which is the, the, uh, uh, the requirement, the, uh, the minimum requirement. So basically what we're asking you for um, is what we think to be very minor variances, um, and they're necessary, as I said, because Mercedes, uh, Mercedes the franchisor, uh, has this new look, and we think it's a very nice um, right. look, uh, and um, we would like to move uh, forward with that. Um, we all know that uh, in this area, which is basically automobile dealership row, everybody, obviously including my clients, uh, takes care of their property. They try to do the best they can to bring people from all over Suffolk County and sometimes from Nassau County to, uh, to their facilities. And um, we would like to modernize uh, our facility and um, uh, give the public something uh, new to look at. Uh, as you know, uh, the Bazetta family has more than one franchise in the town. Every one of them um, is a show place. And I guess the new Mercedes place, if this board uh, is so inclined to grant our variances um, uh, will be uh, the newest show place uh, in that strip. So we asked the board for its favorable consideration. Uh, we don't feel that the variance would have an impact on adjacent properties. 
Um, as we indicated, the side where we're asking for the variance is a, a, a type of storage office space um, uh, type buildings. Uh, the variance really is minor in nature, um, and it, it certainly isn't uh, substantial given the fact that the, the property uh, goes back so, so very far. Uh, the site, um, the variance uh, could not cause an adverse effect on the environment. All we're doing is extending the building. Uh, in, in consideration of the entire parcel, it's really a, a little bit, so to speak. So the, the, the total addition, first and second floor, is 12,329 square feet, and there's a canopy of 2,380 square feet. Um, we don't think uh, it ha would have any effect on the environment, um, and was the alleged difficulty self-created? We didn't start anything. We're asking this board uh, for their favorable consideration. I have um, uh, the architect engineers, H2M, um, uh, specifically, uh, for, uh, specifically, if you have any questions, we have uh, uh, Mr. Ken Geringer here. I have the executive vice president of uh, Mercedes, Nancy Bazetta, and also the general manager, uh, William Rydell, if this board would like to question any, any of them. Planning? Two comments, Madam Chair. Um, first, the seller... Uh, does need a variance. However, that's covered in the public notice that's here. There's no problem with going ahead. Um, you know, if you had a home that you're coming in for, that was coming in for a variance, th whether or not there's a seller is not part of the public notice. Uh, the second thing is, with respect to the landscaping uh, reduction, uh, it's very substantial. However, the impact is not great. The, uh, the reason that going from 8% to 1% doesn't have much of an impact is because the property is so deep. I think it's about 1,500 feet deep, uh, over a quarter mile. So the town zoning ordinance requires 8% of the site to be landscaped and that landscaping to be between the parking and the street. Normal properties are about 200 feet deep and the landscaped area tends to be about 20 to 25 feet deep. If the board grants this variance, uh, it's my understanding that the proposed landscaped area is to be 20 to 25 feet deep. I'm not sure. Do you know how deep it would be? We it tried to read the numbers, be? but <laughs> we couldn't <laughs> on the plan. Um, 26 feet. Is it 26 feet? Okay. Okay. What so the, the grant would result in the amount of landscaping that you normally get on Middle Country Road uh, anyway. It's just that this property like I said, is one of the original uh, what they call bowling alley lots because they're so long and deep and so narrow. Most of the others have been cut up and they're not, not so deep. Uh, where the, uh, um, the fitness center is and, and the mini warehouse and stuff like that, those have been split into three or more uh, separate sites. So in any event, if the board granted this, the amount of landscaping in the front yard would look uh, typical of what's on Middle Country. What's out there today exceeds what's typical. All right. Gentlemen, any questions? Okay. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Really moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. The next case is case 16430, People's United Bank, which is the one on Smithtown Boulevard and Nicholas Road. That's been withdrawn. So now the next one is case 16431, People's United Bank, and 100 Motor Parkway, but the location is southeast corner of Indian Head Road and Park uh, Drive, Kings Park, 
property zone NB. Variance to increase the maximum wall sign height from 15 feet to 20, two signs, increase the maximum number of wall signs from one to two. Good evening, Madam Chairperson and members of the board. My name is Patricia Delaney. I'm here representing People's United Bank tonight in connection with their application for an area variance. All right, wait a minute before you do anything. First of all, are you an attorney? Yes, I am. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, okay. May I have your address? For Given Court, Hopog, New York. Okay, thank you. The application that's being made tonight is with respect to variances relating to the property located at 14 Park Drive. This is a People's United Bank branch. This branch has been in existence or was constructed in 1972. So it's been around for quite some time. There have been various signs on it over the years. Uh, People's United Bank is the successor by merger to Bank of Smithtown, which operated at that location from the beginning of from the time that it was originally built in 1972. People's United is the uh, successor by merger. That merger took place in November of 2010. The application that's before you for tonight is for two sign variances on the north side of the property facing Park Drive and on the west side of the property facing Indian Head Road and for two signs as opposed to the permitted one. Uh, with respect to the considerations that come before the board, uh, the first consideration being whether there is an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties. We would, we would uh, provide that there is no such change. The west side sign faces along Indian Head Road. The property across the street is a large retail shopping center filled with signs. Uh, which seem to be varying heights and sizes and colors, uh, including a Chase Bank, which fronts fairly close to Indian Head Road, which also has two signs, one on the east side of the building and one on the north side of the building. Um, the property adjoining to the along Park Drive, immediately to the north of this of the subject property is a commercial property. The property on the south side of this building is also a commercial property. Both have signs. The, sign, the property to the south is a funeral home which has a large monument sign. All of the signs in the shopping center across the street and in the signs on the adjacent properties are all illuminated as is, the, as is people's um, plan with respect to the two signs that are before you tonight. The illumination is governed by a photo cell, so it comes on at dusk uh, and goes off early at, in the morning at dawn. The, the, although I didn't spend a whole night through at the uh, locations in the areas, I did notice that they were on at night and they were on pretty early in the morning. So seems that the illumination is the same for all of the adjoining properties. With respect to whether the, the request that we're, we're, we're making tonight could be achieved by some other method, due to the construction of the building, it would be very difficult to achieve uh, the signs with another method. The property, the north side of the building has a glass uh, facade. If you look at the pictures, the facade from the base of the building to the top is just a little over 15 feet. So the significance in the variance is really only about 13 inches. Um, with respect to the west side of the building, because of the topography which runs, there's a drive-through, I don't know if you're familiar with the property, you probably are because it's been there for a long time. There is a drive-through, so the slope from the drive-through to the south side of the property is quite extreme.
But it would be, the, at, even if you average that slope, which I understand is typical practice by the town, it still is going to exceed the 15 foot height requirement. But because of the size of the windows on that side of the property, there is no space to attach a sign except across the facade at the very, very top. The reason that, the, that we're asking for two signs is because the building faces two main, or well, two streets, one along Park, one side on Park, and one side on Indian Head. Whether the variance is substantial is the next request that's being, that has to be considered by the board. As I've, as I've alluded to earlier, the, with respect to the north side of the building, from the, from the doorfront on that side to the top is just over 15 feet. The block letters actually would fall within that 15 feet. And it's only the upper orbit of the sign, which is approximately 13 inches, that falls above the 15 feet. So the variance on that side is very minor. With respect to the variance on the west side, while five feet may seem substantial, because it's due purely to the topography of the property. Whether or not, we don't feel that, this, that these sign requests will have an adverse effect on the environment. As I, as I mentioned earlier, this is a, a very busy commercial thoroughfare along uh, Indian Head Road. Uh, there have been signs on the building over the course of the, since the building was constructed. The area along Park Drive, while there are residential homes, the bank building faces is on the very uh, west, northwest corner of the property. There is no house directly across the north side of the building. Directly across the north side of the building is a commercial property. And the sign faces directly that onto that commercial property. There is a parking lot which abuts a residential piece and faces a residential piece across the street, but there is no sign on that side of the building. And there is a, a landscape buffer along there. So there would be no, neither of these signs face residential property directly. Whether the, the, uh, the situation before us is uh, self-created, well, Peoples took the bank, took this building over as part of the merger. They didn't construct the building. Um, they're faced with a building that on the west side would be impossible to meet the 15-foot uh, height restriction. And on the north side faces, the request is for a minor, a, uh, a minor, variation in your in the town's requirements. There is no further plans to develop this property. The bank, the branch is going to stay exactly as it is now. Um, there's no further request to put any signs on the east side of the property facing the residential area. The request is just for these two particular signs. There is a monument sign that has already been approved on the northeast on the northwest corner, um, and the the request is being made tonight to, for just the two signs that are above the uh, along the top of the building. Our feeling is that the the variations are fairly minor. Uh, the building has been there for a long time. Peoples is now is now taking over this the Bank of Smithtown's business. They're looking to for people to know that they're there, uh, and to continue to operate in the community and make a nice presentation of the building. And so we'd ask your fair consideration and of their requests. Thank you. I'm just curious. Are you coming in with other? of the other banks, or is this the only one that you had to come in with? This is the only one that we had to come in with, yes. Okay, and so I guess that the first one is withdrawn because you didn't need the variances? The first one was withdrawn because there was room to lower the, uh, to lower the sign, and okay. so that's what they did. Right. I should mention that the signs have also been there. there most of the signs, in case you've been around, ha are already up. And one of the signs that's up is one of the ones in the, at the new St. James branch. Right. Um, that one, the board had just, had just granted a variance. Uh, I believe it was March of last year. There, the height on that one went from 15 to 17 feet. So. Thank you. Planning? I have two comments, Madam Chair. The uh, first is 
The zoning ordinance permitted two wall signs on buildings that were on two streets up until 2007. I don't think it was intentional on the town board's part um, to reduce it to one, but that's what the ordinance does today. It does permit only one sign. Okay. So uh, two signs were permitted as a matter of right um, from 1972 in this building up till 2007. Um, the second comment is it's technically possible to have a sign in compliance on the west elevation, but if you look at the photographs, it would put it in the middle of the windows, and I think to the average person, that would be less appealing than what the, uh, what the property owner uh, wants to legalize. Okay, thank if, you. If I can just respond to the second comment, that I have a representative here from this sign de design company, and I think that he would, he would probably, he would very likely attest that it would be very difficult to affix the sign of that size to the glass. There would be some safety concerns there, so. Thank you. Gentlemen, any questions? Thank you so much. You're welcome. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Gregory moved the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Next case is case 16432, Drew Berman, uh, 6 Emerald Court, Comac. Location, south side of Emerald Court, west of Cameo uh, Road, Comac. Property zone R10. Request variance to reduce the minimum rear yard from 50 feet to 43 feet for proposed 216 square foot roof over rear deck. Variance to increase the maximum paved surface in the front yard from 25% to 30%. And your name, please? My name is Bruce M. Berman. Why don't you take the mic out so that you don't mind. Is this any better? That's fine. Okay. Thank you. My name is Bruce M. Berman. And your address, Bruce? 6 Emerald Court, Comac, New York, 11725. Right. Will you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Madam Chairman and members of the board, uh, I am requesting two specific variances this evening during this hearing. Number one, this variance would not produce an impact on adjacent properties or the neighborhood because the overall height and total square footage of my residence with the incorporation of the proposed roof overhang addition over the existing rear deck would be significantly less than the other homes in my immediate neighborhood and vicinity. In the case of the requested expansion of my existing one car width driveway, the total paved area of my front yard would increase to only 30.0% and the proposed expanded driveway would not approach the minimum setback of one foot to the side lot line. No curb cuts will be required and the width of the existing driveway front apron will not be altered. It is most important to note that the existing percentage of my paved front yard is 25.2%. And this is based upon the existing one car driveway with the same length and width dimensions from when the house was constructed in 1958 and with the existing walkway dimensions. The expanded driveway would also allow me and my wife to park all of our vehicles in my driveway, thereby providing less negative visual impact to the neighborhood than if some of our vehicles were to be parked in the street, which is presently the case. The request is not substantial because my rear yard property line is not parallel with the residence. The rear corner of the proposed roof overhang for the existing rear deck meets the town's minimum required 50 foot setback for the rear yard but the opposite corner of the overhang requires a 43 foot setback. The proposed roof overhang is an open structure in uninhabited space to be built over an existing deck and it is not extending into the rear yard any further than the existing rear deck. With regard to the proposed expansion of the existing driveway, this request is not substantial due to the irregular or pie shape of my property 
and front yard. The existing total front yard paved area is 25.2%, and I am requesting that this be increased to 30.0%. This is an increase of only 4.8%, and even with the requested paved area, I am still unable to realize a continuous full two-car width driveway. This benefit cannot be achieved by an alternative because I was recently granted a variance approval in February of 2011 by the town, it was your BZA case number 16351, to reduce the minimum side yard from 12 feet to 5 feet and total side yards from 28 feet to 18 feet for a proposed 456 square foot garage. At the time of the application for that variance, I was unaware of the town requirement defining front yard paved area being limited to a maximum of 25%. I am now requesting that the allowable front yard paved area be increased for this residence to 30.0% as I require a driveway of suitable width for use with my newly approved two car garage Having only a one-car width driveway and a two-car garage creates a hardship for me in that I would be unable to make full use of my two-car garage. My wife and I own three cars, and we desire to park these vehicles in our driveway and off the street for safety and security purposes. With my existing one-car width driveway, it is currently not possible to park all our vehicles in my driveway. I also wish to have a roof overhang over the existing rear deck of my home for my personal enjoyment. Due to the southern orientation of the rear deck, there is considerable sun exposure and the addition of the overhang would significantly reduce the amount of this exposure, allowing me to utilize this deck during the course of the entire day. The variance would not cause an adverse effect on the environment because the proposed roof overhang addition to our existing rear deck and the proposed driveway expansion are minor in size compared to the adjoining homes in my immediate neighborhood and vicinity. The proposed rear deck overhang would not require any energy for heating or air conditioning and minimal additional electric power for lighting would be required and no additional sewage or waste discharge to the environment would be created as a result of the requested variance and change. The proposed driveway expansion would not require any uh, energy usage whatsoever and no sewage or waste discharge to the environment would be created as a result of the requested variance and change. The difficulty was not created by the applicant or a former owner because the requested 43 foot rear yard setback for the proposed rear deck overhang or rear roof rear deck roof overhang I should say could not be avoided due to my irregularly shaped property and the non-parallel orientation of my residence relative to the rear property line. The rear corner of the proposed overhang meets the minimum required setback of 50 feet for the rear yard thus conforming to the town zoning ordinance requirements, but the opposite corner of the overhang requires a 43-foot setback. The request to increase the front yard paved area could not be avoided, and this is also due to the irregular or pie shape of my property and the limited area of the front yard. Due to the limited area of the front yard, the existing front yard paved, paved area is 25.2%, and I am requesting that this be increased to 30.0%. As I had mentioned earlier, this is an increase of 4.8%. And even with this additional paved area, as I also mentioned earlier, I am still unable to realize a continuous full two car width driveway. Okay. All right. All right. Will you wrap it up, please? Yes, I'm almost finished. As I described previously, it is most important to note that the existing percentage of paved front yard for my property is 25.2%, and this is based upon the existing one-car driveway with the same length and width dimensions from when my house was built in 1958, and this includes the existing walkway dimensions. The proposed front yard pavement area limitation could not be avoided 
due to the need to expand the area of my existing one car with driveway to accommodate my recently approved two car garage. Thank you. Planning? Uh, no comments, Madam Chair. Gentlemen? Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Readily moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Next case is case 16433, Alton and Saiba Bell and Excuse me, it's Google. Google All right. 116 Plymouth Boulevard, Smithtown. Location west side of Plymouth Boulevard, north of Morewood Drive, Smithtown. Property zone R10. Request variance to permit environmentally sensitive land slopes to ground, depth to groundwater less than 10 feet to be altered. Variance to reduce minimum side yard setback from 12 feet to 10 for an existing 176 square foot first floor addition. Reduce the minimum side yard setback from 12 feet to 4 for an existing roof. Reduce the distance from any lot line from 6 feet to 3 for an existing 223 square foot shed. Reduce the distance from any lot line from 6 feet to 3 for an existing 427 square foot deck. Good evening, Madam Chairman, members of the board. My name is Vincent Tremarco. I represent the applicant. Uh, I've submitted the affidavits of posting and mailing uh, to David Flynn. I put this up on a board uh, because uh, for those of you board members that didn't go to this property, uh, a real visual of this could see the uh, adverse uh, conditions that my client has with respect to this piece of property. It's pie shaped, obviously, and as you can see, it's on Plymouth Boulevard, and the widest part uh, is in the front. And obviously, the front is the most unusual Unuse, unusable part of the property. So when you come down the driveway and you go to the house, you have a, a substantial side yard uh, on one side, but on the other side, uh, therein lies the problem. Uh, there first was a, uh, an overhang uh, that was uh, constructed uh, long before my client bought the property, and obviously it was done without the benefit uh, of a permit. Uh, my client did construct the, uh, the room, which you can, you have pictures there, but you can see it, and it's basically under the overhang. The requested variance for a side yard for the room is 10 feet, but when you count the overhang, which uh, goes above it and extends to the rear, uh, the variance then for that overhang is four feet. But the total side yards uh, that we're asking for uh, meets the, uh, uh, the requirement, uh, which in this district I think is um, uh, 16 and 12, uh, uh, 28. Um, the variance to reduce uh, the distance from any lot line from six to three feet for an existing 223 square foot shed, and that's this shed that you see here, you see it here, and you see it here. And what's deceiving about the shed from uh, uh, the uh, looking at it uh, from the front is number one, it's got a false roof on it, and it's really a flat roof. This little gable end on the front is just on the front. But more importantly, the shed is built in a triangular form as you can see, it goes right back to the point of, of the triangular shape of the property. And that's, that's the reason why we're asking uh, for uh, the reduction of uh, an accessory structure uh, side yard from six to three feet. The variance to reduce 
any lot line from six to three feet for an existing deck. This is the deck, and it kind of wraps around the swimming pool, um, which I guess this is the best photo I have here. You can also see it here. But the real problem with this property is, I think, very obvious. There really isn't any place to uh, construct anything uh, without uh, asking for uh, uh, what appear to be substantial variances. But when you look at the property and you see what uh, uh, my client has had to deal with, uh, these are really the only places where uh, this, these things uh, could have been constructed. The room, uh, even the roof over, although he didn't construct the roof over. Uh, the patio in the back, which is a, as you can see, it's a, a wood patio. And this triangular shaped uh, shed, uh, which fits uh, quite nicely in the, in the corner of the, uh, or in the apex of the uh, pizza pie here. So we asked the board for its favorable consideration. Uh, we don't think it'll make an undesirable change in the character of the area. You can't see it from the street, and I don't think there are any neighbors uh, uh, that have any problem uh, with this particular uh, setup, basically because the lot has uh, such um, uh, uncapabilities and a horrendous way uh, uh, to have to live and, and, and enjoy uh, certain amenities. Um, it, um, whether request of the, air, of the area variance is substantial. Well, yeah, in one respect it's substantial, but on the other hand, look at the lot. Obviously, if, if, if the lot was not pie-shaped, uh, we would probably not be here for any variances. And you can see the way the house was situated, it's kind of moved over uh, to one side. So you have a large side yard here, and you really have nothing here. Um, so, again, uh, we asked the board for its consideration, bearing in mind what, what's there and what my client uh, has had to deal with. Was the difficulty self-created? I guess it was. I mean, the room uh, was uh, uh, constructed uh, without the benefit of a permit. It's, it's almost finished. It's not quite finished. Um, and that's, uh, if you looked in the windows today, any of you board members, you can see how beautiful it is inside. And certainly I think my client will, if this board is so inclined to grant these variances, will finish the job in a, uh, in a uh, workmanlike fashion. So we asked the board for its favorable consideration. Uh, I have my client here tonight if you have any questions. Uh, the first uh, variance to permit environmentally sensitive uh, land uh, that's a, a water issue. Uh, we did do a, a test boring, and it's about six feet to groundwater. So there really isn't any issue uh, with respect to uh, any of the structures that are being uh, proposed here. So again, we ask for your favorable consideration. If you have any questions, I have my client and myself. Thank you. Planning? No comments, Madam Chair. Gentlemen? Thank you so much. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Okay. Why don't you all come up, please, and then I'll call you one at a time, please. Come up, please. Let me have your name and spell your last name. My name is Michael Nutley, N-U-T-L-E-Y. I, and your address? I live at 138 Moorwood Drive, Smithtown. Okay. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Uh, my property backs up to this gentleman's property. He's an excellent neighbor. I never had a problem with him. So that's, that's why I'm here to back him up tonight. Okay. Thank you so much. May I have your name, please? Yes. My name is Stephen Schumacher. Spell your last name. S-C-H-U-M-A-C-H-E-R. I live at 136 Morwood Drive. Um, diagonally, I abut Mr. Raise Delano. your right hand first. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Diagonally, my property uh, 
sort of abuts Mr. Gulamoglu's property. Again, he's been an excellent neighbor. Our children have grown up together. Um, I have nothing but good things to say about the man. Okay. Thank you so much. Good evening. My name is uh, Bob Spampanato. I live at 118 Plymouth Boulevard. I'm, uh, I'm Al's next door neighbor. Okay. Uh, Raise your right oh, hand. Yes. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. And did he get spelling of your name, please? Yes, S-P-A-M-P-I-N-A-T-O. Uh, Mike's my next door neighbor. Uh, I mean, Al, Al's my next door neighbor. And Mike is my neighbor on the other side of the wall that just talked first here. Uh, we all know each other, and uh, Al's a great neighbor and, uh, and a great addition to the neighborhood. I've been in Smithtown for 30 years, and it's been a pleasure to, to live next door to Al and his family. Thank you. Okay. You don't want to come back, do you? <laughs> Usually we get complaints. <laughs> okay. I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. It's really moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. Let me get a thing here. <clears throat> Next case is case 16434, Joseph, uh, Laura and William Joseph, 15 Valleywood uh, Road, Comac. Location, north side of Valleywood Drive, west of Winedange Boulevard, um, Comac. Property zone R21. Request variance reduced the minimum rear yard from 75 feet to 65 for a proposed 200 and 90 square foot basement and first floor addition. Reduce the minimum side yard from 16 feet to zero and total side yard from 34 feet to 23 for an existing 64 square foot shed. Reduce the minimum side yard for paving from one foot to zero existing. Increase the maximum permitted paving in the side yard from 25% to 55% existing. Reduce the minimum front yard from 50 feet to 35 for a six foot fence on top of a 28 inch retaining wall. Reduce the distance from any lot line from three feet to zero for an existing six foot fence on top of a 28 inch retaining wall. Increase the maximum fence wall height from four feet to eight feet four inches existing. Reduce the setback from fence to retaining wall from three feet to zero. Reduce the minimum side yard from 16 feet to 13 for an existing in-ground pool. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Chairwoman. Some people might say that's enough. Um, <laughs> I provided the proof of posting, mailing, and the uh, mailing receipts to, to Mr. Flynn. Um, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board, my name is John Zola. I'm the attorney for Laura and William Joseph, the owners of 15 Valleywood Drive in Comac. Um, when I came here tonight, my daughter had a concert tonight that I tried to get to, and I went and looked at the calendar, and they said, oh, you're number 11 on the calendar. You should be okay, but there's one case that's got a lot of variances. I go, oh, that's the Josephs. Um, what I want to go through, when you just read that, Madam Chairwoman, it sounds like a long list, and I'm going to ask the board to just indulge me a little bit here because I think when you see what happened, you're going to recognize that a lot of these variances were all part and parcel of the several applications that the Josephs have made over the last um, several years from 1985 up until the present. First, I'm going to give you a copy of um, the current COs for the, and the approvals for the uh, various structures and on the property. Then I'm going to give you um, what started the application tonight was their request. They want to put on a 290 square foot addition to the, um, to the house, and that engendered a review of surveys and, and determination by the um, building official that certain variances were needed. So let me just present those to you. Just briefly, as you're distributing the, the COs and the, the plot plan and the um, drawing of what's proposed, 
The property is located 15 Valleywood Road in Comac. Laura and Bill Joseph have lived there since the house was built in 1985. The tax map number is 122-134. The zoning is R21. The property is located on the north side of Valleywood Road, 255 feet from west, west of Wyandanch Boulevard. To the north of the property is a town sump. To the east of the property is a town sump. To the south of the property is a single family home. And to the west is the rear yard of a house that fronts on White Spruce Circle. Um, I'm gonna show you some photos that will lay out how the house to the um, west um, is situated with respect to the Joseph's property. Um, we're making a request, as I counted, for eight different variances. Um, and this was engendered by um, the Joseph's desire to um, increase the living space in the master bedroom by putting on a, an addition of 10 feet in depth by 29 feet across, which is the width of the back of the house. And that's just for um, increased um, living space for the master bedroom and um, a closet area. I'm gonna give you some photos that will and I'll go through those with you just kind of so you have an idea of how this property is situated. Um, the property itself is fairly sloped. It's in the Pines area off of um, Wind Edge Boulevard. And um, once I give you the photos, you'll see not only how beautifully manicured the property is and how well maintained it is, but why the need for certain retaining walls are there. And then I'll go through the additions that were done over the several years and explain to you why the variances that, you're, that we're seeking tonight really were were recognized and approved by the town over the years as my client made additions to the house. I've just presented you um, two groups of photos. The original, the larger photos, um, they're all labeled and indicate what they depict. But significantly, I have the three larger photos show the proposed addition for the existing east elevation. The, pro the plan is to just bump the house out um, 10 feet into the rear yard. The rear yard setback requirement is 75 feet. That's where the house is situated now. By bumping it out even an inch, um, my client needs a variance. Um, one of the things that was considered um, in determining the size of how, far, of how far out they were going to go was the slopes that they have in the backyard, the cost of doing the construction, and they originally had hoped to go out further, but uh, considered the 10 foot bump out of the house would be work well for them and would be the least variance that they could seek while accomplishing the task that they want, which is to add additional living space um, to the house. So you have the east elevation photo. You have the, the north elevation. These are large photos I'm talking about. And the west elevation. The house, all will be doing will be extended out 10 feet, but the roof lines and all, everything that you're looking at will remain the same. The house, was, the house was built in 1985. It was a one-family dwelling with an attached garage and fireplace. As you go through the COs that were issued, that CO was issued in 1985. In 1987, an in-ground pool with a fence was put in. And if you look at that CO, which is dated January 8, 1987, it says, and it's kind of ironic, um, in-ground pool 18 feet by 34 feet by 43 feet with fence to code. The pool was put in, the pool was CO'd, yet today one of the variances that we're re seeking is a variance for the side yard setback for the pool. Um, and that's one of my, as I expressed to you initially, a lot of these variances that we're seeking are for things that were done. My client has always gone to the town, gotten permits, and done everything in accordance with the permits. So 
you have the um, the pool requirement is Existing. Reduce minimum side yard from 16 feet to 13 feet for the existing in-ground pool. That's the last um, variance that's being sought. But what I submit to the board is it's really a variance we shouldn't have to be seeking tonight because that pool was installed, permit applied for, and sealed in 1987. Um, and then one of the applications here is for the 64 foot squ square foot shed. If you look at the photos there, you'll see the shed. There's several pictures of the shed. The shed is in the front yard. On the east side, the f shed is up against the fence, against, the s against what is the sump to the east. That's a town sump. That shed was installed in 1987. That shed in contains all the mechanicals for the pool. It's the heating system and the pool filtration system and it's piped from the pool to the shed. And that was all done in 1987. So again, we're here for that variance, but when this pool was built in and this pool was approved with, in 1987, the shed was there. That's always been there. Um, so again, if a variance is required, we're here for that tonight, but I'm submitting to this board that that's been there since 1987, um, and my clients have always done what's right, go for permits, do the work, and get the final COs. Along the same uh, line, we have um, a CO that was issued in 1992. They converted the attached garage to living space, and they added a 576 square foot garage. That was done in 1992. That's part of the CO that was submitted to you. Um, all the grading that was done in the front, the area on the side of the house where the shed is, all of that was done when the garage was converted to living space and the additional garage was added. Again, part of the entire process was work, inspection by the town, final CO. The area that was graded up by the shed where the, where the asphalt is, that was done for several reasons. As you can see by the photos that I provided, the house is on a, on a, a pretty steep grade. In the wintertime, it gets awfully slippery. And because of the, the pitch of the land, you needed to create some type of flat surface. Because once you go into the backyard behind the gate, it steps up. And as you look at the photos that I provided, the whole property is, is tiered. Um, but again, my point to you is that this was done with the town coming to the property inspecting all of this because it was all done as part of all the construction that was done in 1992. Once again, um, if variances should have, were to be sought, we're here tonight to do it, but it should have been brought up back in 1992. Also, the, the fence on the retaining wall. Again, keeping in mind, as you see in the photos, that the fence on the retaining wall, that was all done in 1992. It's done there for several reasons. One, it only makes sense not to have a three-foot setback because if you had a three-foot setback, you would then have the town's chain link fence, a three-foot space, a retaining wall, then a fence in front of that. Um, my opinion would make it has this condition. But again, this was done in 1992 under the watch of the town when it was, when it was installed. Um, it's aesthetically pleasing. It's a sump on the east. And if you look at the photos showing the full view of the property, it fits in nicely with the house, with the, with the property, and with the, with the overall um, community. Um, in 2005, my client did what we consider just a, a modification. They, they, put the chain, they changed the roof line by adding a reverse gable. They did that in 2005. Again, they got the permits. Um, I'm telling you this just so you know that my client didn't willy-nilly or shun itself for the requirements of a town and just say, we're going to do these things, and if we get caught, so be it. Everything that they did was with proper permits, with inspections. And they're kind of surprised that to go for this 290-foot 
square foot extension that they had to go for these variances because in their mind, everything they did, they did was all um, uh, um, proper and approved by the town. As I mentioned, they're going to extend the rear of the house by 10 feet. Um, and the variance that we're seeking here is to reduce the rear yard from 75 feet to 65 feet. One of the criteria that we have to con consider is, is there another method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than an area variance? And I submit to you there is not because they're at 75 feet now. To extend it, whether it's an inch, a foot, 10 feet, or 20 feet, they still need a variance. The number that they've arrived at was based upon what makes sense for the additional living space and what makes sense economically. Once you're going out four feet or six feet, there comes a number where it just makes um, sense that you go, you expand a certain amount. They figured 10 feet was as far as they could go into the backyard without going further up the slope, into the slopes, and not making a dramatic change in their backyard because as you notice, all that um, stonework and all the tiering, um, it's, it's beautiful, it's professionally done, and it's well maintained. They don't want to have to affect that. So with, we have the request, which I have eight in number, reduce the minimum rear yard from 75 to 65 feet. Again, that's for the, for the 290 square foot addition. Reduce the minimum side yard from 16 feet to zero feet and the total side yard from 34 to 23 for existing 64 square foot shed. Position is, this was all done back when the pool was put in and, and CO'd in 1987. Reduce the minimum side yard for paving from one foot to zero feet. Again, this was all done back when they extended the garage and, and converted the garage to living space in 1992. Oh. Okay. Can you just stop for a minute? We're changing shape. 